Yo, what is going on, my YouTube people? 29 United back here with another video. And in today's video, I'm honored to be joined by a good and longtime friend, Matthias from the SC Paderborn Podcast. How are you doing, my friend? Hi, thank you for having me on the channel. It's an honor. I've been watching your content um, ever since I've known you. So yeah, it's been it's good to be on here. Today's video is going to be about the Bundesliga players that wants to watch ahead of the next season that is coming. So we've come up with a list here from each team. And we're just going to be discussing on which player is wants to watch for the next season. So let's start with the Bundesliga winners. Bayern Munich, my team, the team that I watch and love very dearly. And to be quite honest with you, it's a very hard decision to pick because they're the best team in the Bundesliga. They don't really rely on their youngsters that much. It's a very boring one. I would say Jamal Musiala. But if Paul Wanner somehow gets minutes, then I think he's a player that people would like to watch as well. You know, Musiala had games last season, played a lot more than he did the season before. But yeah, you know, he's a German international already, playing games against England. Bayern have got enough good players who we already know to watch them. So Musiala is probably the easiest uh, player to watch from, from Bayern Munich. The next one is the runner-ups, Dortmund. But with Dortmund, they've had a lot of their players gone and notably their best player Erling Wald Olan which is now gone to Manchester City and to replace him they have brought a player from the Austrian Bundesliga which some of you may be familiar with his name is Karim Adeyemi uh, and if you don't know from his time in Austria you probably know him from FIFA because he is quite a popular player over on that game. So Karim Adeyemi for us too is the player to watch simply because there's been so much hype around him for the past few years and a lot of people thought he would join Bayern Munich ended up joining the rivals Dortmund and as a Bayern fan I'm excited to see what he's gonna do and let's see if he's gonna actually perform like what everyone's been saying for the past few years. Yeah he's definitely gonna play a lot more obviously the news about Sebastian Haller which best wishes to him of course. He's really got a lot of responsibility because you know as we'll talk about later Dortmund have sold another of their striker um, in Stefan Tigges. Dortmund are going to need it because of the injury to Haller as well. For Bayer Leverkusen we're going to be talking about a striker that I adore obviously I'm Iranian and it might be a little boring to some. I personally was a little biased and so was Matthias and we're going to go with the Iranian international Sardar Azmoun which basically was supposed to be joining this season but ended up joining in the last winter transfer window uh, which was very weird slash unexpected it was a whole mess uh, he's played six games in Bundesliga so far he has one goal and one assist and he's been pretty good uh, with them so I'm very excited to see what he has to bring to the table obviously Leverkusen have signed a lot of players as well in Adam Hlozek they've sold Lucas Alario which I know is very dear to Matthias's heart and yeah, I think Osmoon is going to lead up the attack with Patrick Schick and I can't wait to see what they're going to produce. You're very right about Alario. Osmoon's going to have a lot of competition. He's going to have to prove himself by scoring goals, which he has done in his career. But it's an exciting signing for the Bundesliga too. It's an exciting player for the Bundesliga. Moving on to the next team, RB Leipzig. And listen, we, we've been very boring here. And we've gone with Christopher and Cuckoo. And the only reason why we've went for him is because he's genuinely carried the team all by himself. All the other players, I mean, I'm not going to say that they've been bad, but haven't necessarily been that impressive. The only player that Leipzig has had that's been fantastic all year long was in Cuckoo. And Matthias, is there anything you want to add to that? 20 goals and 15 assists last season. I think it's kind of impossible to not put him as a player to watch. Next team, Union Berlin. We're going to go with the man himself, Jamie Leveling, which I've been watching all season long. I can talk about him the whole day, but we're going to keep it short here. Just joined from going to first, uh, who've been unfortunately relegated. Jamie Leveling is a player that can bring a lot of dynamic to this team and Union you know, Berlin which are playing in, in Europe this season. And Union are kind of a perfect team for him, to be honest. You know, at first, it, it was always difficult because they were losing every match. They had you know, hardly any of, the, any of the ball in the match. Uh, he had hardly any shots. Um, but with Union, they're going to be, uh, you know, they finished in the mid-table the last two seasons, you know, qualified for Europe as well. And it's going to be interesting. So, yeah, you know, 20 years old, it's going to be, it's a step up for, for leveling, for sure. For SC Freiburg, we've gone for a double in two players, Kimili Ezequiel the center half and Kevin Schada, uh, which has been very good for Freiburg in the past season. And we've just, I haven't really heard much of him from the media, it seems. And 
kind of hard to understand why. As for Kimberly Zekom, is not a player that I've really watched that much, and he hasn't really played either. But I've heard good things from him from his youth days. And is he going to be the man that can replace Nico Schotterbeck? We're just going to have to wait and see. Probably will be just fine. As for FC Colon, TS loves their manager, so I'm going to let him carry this one. Yeah, FC Colon, what a season. They really relied on Modest. Now, they've been wanting Tigres for a while. They got Tigres. And yeah, it's going to be interesting because he never really had much of a chance at Dortmund. He was always a, you know, fifth sub off the bench sort of player in the last few minutes so now for mines we're going to talk about max leach the center back and this is his chance to prove himself that he's going to be the main man for mines and go ahead and do one hell of a job for them he's quite young like i said he's very rapid i've watched him in the second bundesliga and yeah he will definitely do a job and uh, underrated signing for, for mines i mean they haven't signed many other people, so that's probably why I've put him as one to watch. Next team, we're storming through this with TS. We're going to go with Hoffenheim here. And I actually had no idea who to put it for Hoffenheim, to be completely honest. So Matthias, he gave a good suggestion. And um, obviously, you're a big fan of Paderborn. So you watch a lot of second division Bundesliga. And you know a lot about this player. His name is Finn Ole Becker. Can you tell us more about him and what to expect from him? He's a kind of a central midfielder uh, who can play as an attacking midfielder. He's such a solid player. Yeah, he's just he can run the whole game. He can tackle. He can uh, create chances. And yeah, I think he's just going to fit right into the Bundesliga um, because he just runs all day long. For the next team, we're going to go with Gladbach here. We're going to go with a Japanese international defensive uh, midfielder who can play center back if i'm not mistaken and his name is ko itakura and to be quite honest i've heard of him i've seen him play a little bit and he was fantastic from for shaka from what i've heard it's an interesting player to watch because we don't have many center backs in this list you know gladback were really really bad defensively last season and obviously they sat their coach they're bringing in farka who used to be norwich uh, manager Obviously, they didn't have the best defensive record, so it's going to be interesting to see if he can, he can help carry that defense. Obviously, Gladbach lost Ginter as well um, to Freiburg. Next player that we're going with is Mario Godza from Eintracht Frankfurt. He kind of had his form back at PSV in the Eredivisie. If I was biased, I would have put Alario as player to watch for Frankfurt, but I couldn't not put Goetze. Um, you know, he's only he's, he's, he's only 30 years old still, so he's got legs in him. Uh, he was pretty good at PSV. Uh, Eindhoven, Kostic was carrying the load too much. Um, so Goetze might, he might not play every game, but he's definitely going to be a good player uh, when he's on the pitch. Very well said. Now for Wolfsburg, we're going to go with a player by the name of Wimmer. And um, I don't know much about him, so I'm going to let you take the spot here. Um, he can play both wings and for Wolfsburg, it's gonna, he's going to be a solid player. He's not going to absolutely break statistics and score this many goals, and but he's just going to be a solid player for them. And yeah, he's just a solid Bundesliga quality player who will provide a bit of depth for Wolfsburg who haven't signed that many players. The next player we're going to go with is Philipp Hoffmann for Bochum. Uh, which have had a pretty good season, if I do say so myself. Nobody expected him to do that well. A player to watch that I wanted to put was going to be Arma Belakocha, but instead we went for Philip Hoffman, which, if I'm not mistaken, used to play for Brentford back in the days. Yeah, I couldn't get through the video without including a former Paderborn player, um, so I had to put one here. He's gone around a lot of clubs. He's had Bundesliga I don't think he actually has had Bundesliga experience yet. Um, at 29 years old, he's a very goal-heavy player in the Spider Bundesliga. He, he did score close to 20 goals in the last season in the second division. He really carried Kalsra. Um, Now, that's the team Paderborn just played. We beat him 5-0. They were abysmal up front because they didn't have him anymore. They didn't replace him with anyone. Um, so he really carried them. The next player we're going to go with is Ricardo Pepe from Augsburg, who is for the Americans one of the greatest prospects out there and personally I've seen him play in the MLS he's a very tricky player I like the way he plays but we've seen him play some games for Augsburg and he wasn't 
particularly the best. They paid a lot of money for him. Um, for Augsburg standards, they hardly ever spend a lot of money for a single player. But yeah, he, he has to contribute to Augsburg. Are they, they going to go down? <laughs> it's a sad fact for them because they've lost players and you know he has to live up to his price tag, which was a lot of money in Augsburg. Put a lot of trust in him as well. Next player we're going to go is Hiroki Ito from Stuttgart. And I know this player a lot because I do follow Japanese football. Obviously, not that much, but uh, to some extent, and I've heard of him. And yeah, he's he's really, really good. He's um, been a player that the Japanese people have been praising for quite some time. He's very young. I don't think he's going to be that player who's going to immediately be good for Stuttgart. Yeah, he's joining a club that, you know, the captain's Japanese in, in Endo. Um, He's, I think he's going to fit right in, to be honest. He might not be that immediate player, like you said, but he's he's going to fit in as a, a good Bundesliga defender, I think. He's still young, you know, he's, he's 23 years old. Um, got a market value of about 5 million. That's the sort of player Stuttgart sign. I'm sure he's going to be a good Bundesliga defender. So the next player will be Dore Luca Bacchio from ETA Berlin. And he's been a player that is just one of those players where he can either go and have a fantastic season or he can go ahead and just have a very mediocre season. But we both feel like this season will be a good season for him. Good striker. But at Berlin, they do need those goals. What do you think about that? I completely agree with, with what you say. You know, he's had a couple of seasons now in the sec uh, in the Bundesliga even. And last season, obviously, he went on loan um, to Wolfsburg. I don't know why, but uh, they signed him anyway kind of just didn't do much. Um, scored two goals, got three assists in 22 games. My argument for every single player or every single attacker in the um, worst teams is they've just got to score goals, but it's true, you know, and he's one of their best players. So um, if he doesn't contribute, then Hertha are going to be, yeah, in trouble. The next player is going to be Florent Mollet from Schalke, the newly promoted team. Well, I say newly promoted team as if they haven't been in the Bundesliga for the past I don't know how many years, but for Florent Mollet has been a fantastic player for Montpellier in Liga for the past few years. I've not really watched him that much. I don't know much about him, but I have heard from Liga fans that he's been a very good player for them. So it's a good signing for Schalke. Definitely a player that can help an attack. And in midfield, last but not least, we've got Mitchell Weiser, an ex Bayern player, an ex Leverkusen player who signed for Werder Bremen. A good right back. He's slacked off over the past few years, but perhaps he might revive his career here at Bremen. What do you think? With Weiser, his career has really been just waiting for the opportunity now. He should be starting as first right back. There you go. We've made it to the end. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. I really appreciate if you guys made it to the end. Obviously, a big, big thank you to Matthias from the SC Paderborn podcast. All of his links will be down in the description for you guys to check out. All of my social links will also be in the description. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe. We're very close to 3,000 subscribers. Smash that like button. Follow me on Instagram. Join me on Discord. Follow me on Twitter. All those good stuff. Everything is in the description. Matthias, is there anything you want to say before we head out? No, thank you. And yeah, enjoy the season, everyone. I think it's going to be a good Bundesliga season, um, you know, from the top to bottom. And I'd recommend watching some second division if you can, because it's just, it's crazy every year. Um, no different this year as well. So yeah, thank you for having me on as well. I'll see you guys in the next one.